be unto you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. My name is Pastor Emmanuel Rene. Amen. Welcome. Happy Monday, everybody. Pray well. We made it to the weekend. Um, we pray so far that you have enjoyed on the atonement. But we're going to continue to the, this Monday on the nature of the atonement. The nature of the atonement. So press like and share. Tell everybody the voice of the prophet is on. So we're going to start with the word kafah. Right? It means to cover figuratively, to expiate or condone, right? to placate or conceal. It is translated by these words, appease, um, uh, uh, make an atonement, right? cleanse, right? cleanse, forgive, disannul, be merciful, pacify, purge, reconcile. It comes from the word kippur, meaning um, from from the word kippur, meaning expectation of atonement, expectation of atonement. The old English word atonement means to be made at one, to be made at one, to reconcile, to bring about agreement or concord, right? To cover or expiate, right? To purge to purge away, right? To answer, right? Or make satisfaction. To appease, which is to make quiet, right? To make amends. So let, let, let's, let's go read Exodus 29, right? Because we talk about last week when because we sin, right? And because God is a holy God, he needed judgment. He needed, he, you know, he, uh, um, you know, um, Jesus have come to save you from the wrath of God. Not only from your sin, your sin, because you have to understand God's wrath is coming upon all those who have not received Jesus, right, as, as Lord and Savior, because he's the only one who can save us from the wrath of God because of sin, right? Um, Exodus 29. Let's go to it real quick. Exodus chapter 29. Amen. Verse 33. He beginneth the reading of God's holy word. Um, and they shall eat those things wherewith the atonement was made to consecrate and to sanctify them. See that, right? But the strangers should not eat there because they are holy. Amen. So the first thing you need to understand that the atonement, understand that God is holy. This is why they need, there has a need to be, to be atoned or pardoned. Because God is a holy God. And it's also of the things we have made, you know, sinful men have broke the divine law of God in the garden. So therefore, his holiness de demanded to be appeased. It required appeasement or he wouldn't be who he was. Amen. So let's continue reading. And if out of the flesh of the consecration of the bread remain to the morning, then thou shalt burn the remainder with fire. It shall not be eaten because it is what? Holy. And thus shall thou do unto Aaron, to his son, according to all things which I have commanded Seven days thou shalt consecrate them, and thou shalt offer every day a bullock for a sin offering for what? Atonement. And thou shalt cleanse the altar when thou hast made an atonement for it, and thou shalt anoint it to sanctify it. Seven days thou shalt make an atonement for the altar and sanctify it, and it should be an altar most holy. Whatsoever toucheth the altar should be what? Holy. Now, those are the sacrifices that had to be made for us to have relationship with God in the Old Testament. Because in those days, Jesus wasn't there. But we have to, you know, the atonement was a substitute to the ultimate atonement, which was supposed to be Jesus Christ. You understand that? So every time to have a talk with God, like we talking to God now, come boldly into the throne, we couldn't do that in the Old Testament because of our sin. It was ever before us. There was no blood of the lamb, so we had to use blood of goats and everything else because we have to recognize that we were sinners and that we needed a savior to save us. 
Now look at, let's go look at Leviticus chapter 6. Amen. Leviticus chapter 6 verse, um, Leviticus, I'm sorry, 16. Verse 6. Leviticus 16 verse 6. Hallelujah. And Aaron shall offer his billock of the sin offering, which is of himself, and make an atonement for himself and for his house. And he should take the two goats and present them before the Lord at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And Aaron shall cast lots upon the two goats, one lot for the Lord and the other lot for the scapegoat. And Aaron shall bring the scapegoat upon which the Lord lot fell and offer him for a sin offering. But the goat on which the life fell to be the scapegoat should be presented alive before the Lord to make an atonement with him and to let him go for a scapegoat into the wilderness. And Aaron shall bring the bullock of the sin offering, which is for himself, and shall make an atonement for himself and for his house, and shall kill the bullock of the sin offering, which is for himself. And he shall take a censer full of burning coals of fire from the altar before the Lord, and his hand full of sweet incense beaten small and bring within the veil. Well, I thank God that we didn't, you know, as a pastor, I didn't have to do all that. I would have forgot something, get anybody killed or something. Because I would have, well, who, 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 you know, you know, I would have been like, who got the goat? Who got, who got the answers? I forgot to throw it, you know. But thank God that for Jesus and, and, and the thing, you know, we don't think it's serious. Our sins are serious before the Lord. And even at this point as a believer, sometimes our flesh causes us to sin. And we don't know how those sins can separate us from God and having a relationship. Once we recognize every kind of sin, either mental, physical, spiritual, or sexual, you know, is the very thing that keep us from God. You know, um, we have old sayings where people like, um, you know, you know, I, I'm not the way I used to be, but I'm better. No, if you're still doing it, God cannot have a relationship with you. Just because we have Jesus as the pure atonement of God, it doesn't give us the right to keep on sending and still expect a relationship the way it should be. We have to ask God to purge us. We have to ask God to, to purify us, not just having religious things and, you know, religious dedication and services and all these things. What God is required is not us dancing. It's not us doing all these other things in church, but to, to develop a pure heart, a purged heart of holiness before him. Amen. A pure heart of holiness and really asking God for mercy. You know, I heard this preacher say this morning, you know, um, you know, you know, pastor say he was going to his computer and it popped up. Porn popped up in this thing. Right. And he said, it, you know, immediately all the feelings come back. He's, he said, I haven't looked at this thing, you know, see a naked woman for a long time. So all of a sudden he said he felt something. But he walked away from it and, and clicked it off. And then immediately he, you know, he called one of his leaders and he said, this is what, you know, this is what just happened. You know, this is what just happened. Told somebody about it and not keep it to himself because then he didn't want to be tempted to go back and look at it. So, so finding that, that um, he said, if the, you know, if God gave you the spirit of God that is within him, right, to raise him from the dead. So if God can, the Spirit of God can raise Jesus from the dead, how, how is God don't have the power to hold you from sin and from porn and from every other sin? He said, because we have not given him the keys and we have not surrendered. A lot of times we surrender to the flesh. And if you look at all these things these guys have to do to be accountable to, for prayer, accountable because now it lets you know that sin is so much a serious thing. That, you know, he said that, um, verse 13, he should put the incense upon the fire before the Lord, that the cloud of the incense may cover the mercy, so that is upon the testimony, that he die not. So having relationship with God in the old days because of sin can cause actual death. We take it granted that we can go into prayer because of mercy and grace, we don't die, that we can continue in it. I'm guilty just like anybody else is guilty. But as I read this, I'm looking at all the things they had to go through, all the 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 the, 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 
you know, the, the formations and all these things just to get into the altar to say uh, good morning to God and, you know, say a prayer. And then for me to say a prayer that um, death may apply in those things, we take church for granted. We, we shot under our sin and we have um, made, made our sin pet dogs and pet cats. We, we dress it. We make it look a certain way. It's my issue. It's my thing. But when I look at them, the price that they have to pay with their life to be able to die, to be able to serve God. So it's not the same way as a pastor. You come in and you can have your own issue and you make it because by the grace of God, thank you, Jesus. Imagine if you can go up there and then you die suddenly. Things will change. You don't get a second chance, but I thank God for his mercy today. I thank God for his mercy, for his blood covering me that even when I was not even deserving of it or any of us was deserving of God's grace. So this is why we're talking about the nature of the atonement and what Jesus has done for us. And we take it for granted. We take it for a thing. Now look at this in verse 14. And he shall take the, the, of the blood and the bullock and sprinkle it with his finger upon the mercy seat eastward. And before the mercy should she sprinkle the blood with his finger seven. I would have messed up. Somebody would have died. I bet, wait, wait, where East at? Let me throw the blood over here. Let me do the finger thing seven times. I couldn't do it. Thank God. I couldn't. I couldn't. I wouldn't make it. I wouldn't be a priest. Because I'd be like, okay, put the rope around him and drag him because he forgot something. But this is the nature of the relationship with God. You know, if anything you could say this morning, that this is how serious it is to have a relationship with God. And we're gonna have to understand it costs for us to have it. It, 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 it costs, for, you see, back in the old days, it caused the death of the priest to, to be able to come before God. For me to come before God, it caused the death of his son. And I have to start, we have to start, if we have not getting it serious, we have to start thinking more serious about the things and really you know we're gonna have we in the flesh and god knows we're gonna have a flesh issue but we're gonna have to know that there's a power of the lord there's a power of the holy spirit if he can raise jesus from the dead he can keep my flesh he can keep my soul you know do you understand what i'm saying he can keep my spirit he can keep my being if he can raise jesus from the dead verse 15 said that he should kill the Kill the goat of the sin offering that is for the people and bring his blood within the veil and to do that that blood as he did with the blood of the bullock. Sprinkle for the mercy seat and before the mercy seat. And that blood represents Jesus. And that, that blood was not even significant because they have to do it over and over again. Could you imagine? Over again. That's the holiness of God. They had to do, and we can take the blood of Jesus for granted because we're like, oh, well, you know, I'm accepting the beloved and I can do this and I can do that. But the price that is paid here for these guys, and he's doing it for the... So let me tell you something. I bet you all these apostles and prophets and teachers, I bet you if your life was in the line to go before the people, you wouldn't take the titles. Well, let me tell you something. Your life is in the line anyway. Your, your life is in the line. Because, you know, we... we we seem to think that, um, and back in the Old Testament, um, uh, um, you know, being a priest was not a glamorous thing, especially if your life is on the line. Mm -hmm. you got to know you called to this thing because I'm not, see, they were not doing this to be famous. They wasn't, you know, um, you know they were not going to go to the church, uh, first church of Israel and start preaching over there or, or, or somebody carrying their, you know, their goats or anything. Else. You know, it was nothing like that, man. It was really a calling for the Lord on behalf of the people because you understand for me to serve the people is to die. Do you know that when you become an army officer that you sign to die when you go to war, never to come back? Well, the priesthood was like that. When you become a priest, part of it, you, you're going to die one day. You, know, you may not know when you're going to die, but when I become a priesthood, because of I, I, you know, you know. I may have forgot to sprinkle it the wrong way. I may have forgot to bring the goat the wrong way or do something wrong. Um, if you think I'm joking, look at Uzziah. He touched the ark the way he's not supposed to touch it. 
He wasn't mean. He wasn't evil. Even in the of a heart, good, good thought can get you killed, even if it's not the right way. So now these days we have priesthood where it's all about you, by fame and by glory. We need to go back to the days where it was about calling and it was about bringing God's people before God holy and righteous so we can have a good relationship before the Lord. Somebody say amen. Men broke God's holy law, right? According to Genesis 2.17, when he said, you should not eat of this thing. He said, you're not going to eat it. You're not going to make no tea leaves out of it. You know, by you, you ain't going to smoke it, Adam. You know, you're not going to do none of those things with it. Amen. So you can have everything else. But, but um, um, you know, this thing, don't, this tree, don't touch it. That was God's divine law. So sin provo provokes God's wrath, which then needed to be appeased, right? The Lord demands satisfaction, and it could only be satisfied when, when the standard of holiness is upheld. It can only be satisfied when the standard of holiness. Do not think the standards have dropped. The standard of holiness have not dropped. It is still the same. Look at this. Not until someone die, right? The death penalty for breaking the standard of holiness. God, um, you know, had been done. God would not be um, satisfied by it. Let's turn to Roman chapter 6. Roman chapter 6. Amen. I hope you're getting something out of it. Roman chapter 6. Um, verse 23, right? Let's look at it right now. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So you see that? For the wages of sin is death. And can I tell you something? The same wages is still working today. Any sin that we commit right now is working death in our life. But I know Jesus. Well, if you know Jesus, get away from, the, from sin. Because sin is working death in your life. Now, let me tell you something. Now, when we talk about death, it's not just talking about the physical death. We know that man going to die physical death. But the wages of sin is working spiritual death. It, 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 and eventually, separation from God. But before you are separated eternally from God, which is spiritual death, you get, while you're on earth, while you're dwelling with sin, you are totally um, separated from God now. Oh yeah, but I'm a believer and, and um, I still go to church on Sunday. But let me tell you something, the wages of sin is still death. Meaning this, right? That you, are, you can be in the church, but God's not close to you. You don't feel close to God. You can shop, but you're not close to God. You worship, you're not close to God. Because God's standard of holiness will be upheld. But God loves me. Yeah, he does love you. He does. But guess what? We're going to show in the next, um, maybe on Tuesday and Wednesday, that God's holiness does not, uh, his love does not precede his holiness. He, he, he will not love you enough to allow you to sin and still be around him. So a lot of times spiritual death come with us because we are, you know, we don't judge it, you know. We have to take care of it. So how are you going to say God? Because, you know, don't think God is your parent. You send you go around them. God is, God's character will not permit him to have you around him. Because his love will not permit you to be around him. Because his holiness will kill you. You, you, you understand that? So the wages of sin is still death. Even though you know Jesus, but if you choose to go out there in the rain without no umbrella, death will become you. You can't go out there and fornicate and do adultery and do all the other sin, the sin of the spirit or the sin of the flesh, and still say, I have relationship. Um, we all done it. Myself, yourself, everybody have done it. Nobody, whatever. But I'm saying to you, we need to be more aware about where and how we get in ourselves into and the price it takes to come back. Amen. The price it takes to come back. Now, the, the, the death penalty had been executed for sin. Because, you see, so, so, so God executed death. Mm -hmm. He said the wages of sin is what? Death. What he mean death? Physical death. Somebody going to die. Somebody have to die now because of sin. Mm -hmm. 
Somebody have to die because of sin. Ezekiel 18, 4. I hope you're getting some out of it so far. Ezekiel 18, um, verse 4. Behold, all souls are mine. As the souls of the Father, so also the soul of the Son is mine. The soul that sinneth, it shall what? Die. Now, I ain't talking about only physical death. It's talking about you're going to die, right? Eventually, you will die. Sin will kill you early, real early. I don't care which. If you choose to dwell on that road, right, and keep on not changing, eventually it will kill you. It will kill you spiritually. It will kill you physically. Then it, then it will kill you eternally from God. So you can't go around and saying, I'm going to do what I want to do and the way I want to do it, and then everything is okay. You have to walk away from these things. Ezekiel um, 18, 4, let's go to verse 20. Verse 20 said, The soul that sinneth, it shall die. The son shall not be the iniquity of the father, neither should the father be the iniquity of the son. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him, and the wicked of the wicked, uh, the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. So whatever you do is going to be on you. It ain't by nobody else. And, you know, your father ain't going to pay for your sin. Your father's sin going to be your father's sin, and your sin going to be your sin. And everybody got to pay for their own thing. Look at this. And as it is appointed unto man, once to die, but after this, the judgment. So what it is really saying to us, right? That after you die, it's not over. <laughs> after you leave this physical body, you know, it, it, it is not over. It's only the beginning. It says this, but look at this. And as it is appointed for once men to die, boom, that should be comma, uh, period. That's it. To some of us who believe, oh, you know, I died, that's it. No, it's not. No, it's not. Don't listen to nobody. You li Listen to what the Bible said. He said, as it is appointed, man wants to die, comma, continuation. But after this, he said, forget what I've been saying. But after this, what? The judgment. Hmm? But after what? After death. Physical death. Mm -hmm. And then guess what happened? The judgment. Mm -hmm. So you don't die. You just leave your house. So you don't get away from sin. So sin will follow you eternally because God demands uh, 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 judgment uh, for sin because he's a holy God. So even when you leave this physical body, it is never over. The holiness of God against the sinfulness of men, right, produced the reaction of divine wrath. That's the divine wrath of God. It is wrath that's needed to be appeased before a holy God could ever be reconciled. This appeasement is the atonement. So God said there ain't going to be no reconciliation with man until death takes place. That's the penalty that will appease me, that will appease my holiness. So this is why we're learning about the atonement. Right? It's not just a Jewish word. It's also a Christian word that talks about the seriousness of what God had done for us. And for us not to take it neglectful. Mm -hmm. That's why I said neglect um, not so great in salvation. Let me tell you something. When you say to yourself, I got time to be saved. Now let me tell you something. Neglect not. Uh, you being saved is not something that you decide to be saved. I'm telling you, you, what do you need to be saved from? Not from sin. See, you need to be saved from the wrath of God. So Jesus came to save you from the wrath of God, which is now by what appeasing the sin that you did so you can be reconciled with God. Let me tell you something. So receiving Jesus, Lord and Savior, is an act of, of giving up and saying, God, forgive me for my sins. And, and I won't, don't want to take your wrath in my life. Forgive me for my... So it's not, oh, I come tomorrow. I come when I'm ready. Let me tell you something. I'm going to tell you, look at it straight in the eye. What you need salvation from is God's wrath against sin. If you are a sin, let me tell you something. One thing I don't want to do, I've seen the wrath of man. They can shoot you and, and that's it. And you're dead. But God will kill you. And then get you in the spirit world. And then judge you and then separate you and kill you again eternally. So... He said, that's what the scripture said, don't fear those that can kill the body, but, um, but fear the one that killed um, body and spirit. Amen. So thank God for the atonement.
thank God for his grace. So if you got any sin, it's time to think about it. Say, is it worth my relationship with God? Is it worth the things I have to do with God? Amen. So sometimes we can get so caught up with church and we forgot the real purpose of the, the cause and somebody died for me to be here and for me to have relationships.